Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and this is my buddy Johnny Millennium. Thank you for being here, my friend. No problem, but thanks a, for having me. You a very formal handshake. Yeah, this is not a beer here. This is a nice water. <laughs> We're not drinking beer before we begin. That's straight vodka. <laughs> straight and, vodka. And we are going to be talking about all kinds of incredible things today, but you know we've got to get started with the news, and Johnny and I are going to talk about some of the stuff that's happening in our rundown today. But first, I want to uh, give a shout out to Sean Peterson. He is our newest sponsor, and we thank you so much for your support. Remember, if you'd like like to sponsor uh, EPN, you got to go to gaming.youtube.com slash EPN TV and click that sponsor button. And thank you all that do or and uh, support us in any way that you do, whether you're watching, whether you're here live or you're watching the archive, you rock. Thank you so much. But let's get started with the rundown. The Battle Royale component in Fortnite is getting a lot bigger. Epic Games has announced that they're adding a new mode to the Battle Royale portion of the game that will increase the team size to 20. This means that players will be able to join together in groups of 20 and then face off against five other teams of 20, keeping the total number of players on the map at 100. Epic thinks this will change the way people play, allowing them to organize in larger groups and coordinate their efforts if you all have headsets, that is. The Teams of 20 mode launches tomorrow, but will only be available for a limited time. And we'll talk about the uh, success of Fortnite uh, after the rundown bits right sure, now. Sure, yeah. Right I, haven't, I haven't played the game. I've seen a lot of people play. It looks amazing. It, it looks pretty cool. It does look have amazing. Have you played a lot of it? I, I've just played it in uh, test settings, but I haven't played the the sort of finished version that's available. Oh, right, right. Nowhere. I've downloaded it, but I just haven't set up all my accounts. I definitely plan to. Another big shooter is getting some new and very unexpected content. Activision and developer Treyarch have released a new mode and map for 2015's Call of Duty Black Ops 3. The map is called Redwood Snow and is a new snow-covered version of the existing map Redwood. The new mode is called Infected and sees one player turn into a zombie, of course, at the start of the match with the goal of inter-infecting the other players before the time is up. The fact that Activision is releasing new content for such an old game speaks to the lasting popularity of Black Ops 3 and lends credibility to the rumors that the next game in the series will be Black Ops 4. Expect that to be announced very soon. And that is free. Uh, yes, it's... Well, as you know, it's funny these days. I'm shocked when something's free. I'm like, you didn't have to pay for that? That's yeah, great. I think free is going to be an operative word wow. a lot this year. Yeah. Uh, yet another big media franchise is about to sink its teeth into the augmented reality market. Universal Pictures has announced Jurassic World Alive, an augmented reality game that's pretty much Pokemon Go with dinosaurs. Users will be able to search the world around them to find pocket monsters. I mean dinosaurs, uh, and then capture them, level them up, and use them to battle other players. Sound familiar? Like, nobody... This is crazy. Are you going to be out yeah. in the middle of the night trying to find a T-Rex or something every, like that? Every archaeologist in the world is rolling their eyes right now. Uh, game makers have been rushing to cash in on the AR market after the unprecedented success of Pokemon Go back in 2016. Jurassic World Alive will devour iOS and Android devices soon, likely around the same time that Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom hits theaters in June. Now, remember, we're going to talk about all of these things. If you've got comments or questions or whatever, uh, let's keep it to uh, to the rundown kind of topics for now, okay? Because Johnny and I are going to have a Let's Play and Chat session later on. Mm. Uh, but let's move on to our next story. It looks like Kratos is using all of his might to slay and destroy microtransactions. Can we do it as Kratos? <laughs> microtransactions! I'm just so happy there's no microtransactions in this game. <laughs> the new God of War game will not have any in-game microtransactions or loot boxes. That's according to director Corey Barlog. When asked by a fan on Twitter if players will be able to spend money to unlock content, Barlog replied with an enthusiastic, no freaking way, which should come as a welcome uh, bit of news for gamers everywhere. <laughs> Microtransactions have obviously been getting a lot of heat following recent titles like Star Wars Battlefront 2, so the makers of God of War are smart to skip this issue altogether. God of War hits the PS4 next month, and when it comes out, I plan to have a sick day and be away from everything. Is that cool? Is it every day sick day around here? <laughs> I guess I it is. But let's have a clap, man. Yes. No DLC. I, I love I know, that. No, no DLC. Yeah, free stuff. I, I love it. I love that uh, that level of honesty and just you know the excitement to put that information out there is uh, awesome. You know, it. it's crazy, but we're applauding a company releasing a game the way they originally used to re release games. Here's the entire game. Enjoy. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about this because Johnny's here to help me and us celebrate the fact that Nintendo has crossed that one-year threshold yes. with the Nintendo Switch. 
Um, but we are going to talk about this idea of games that finish and wrap up and uh, are one thing when you put your money down. Remember you used to put in a cartridge in the 80s and yes. you played the game? That was it? There was no add-on cartridges or another chip you had to put in? I mean, there's, there's a nothing lot of else. amazing things that are coming out of games of serv as, uh, as service and also the idea that you can embellish your experience by paying to add things. Yeah. But there's also this underlying kind of, uh, I don't know, Try sadness, to yeah. I think, for a lot of players that have been playing for a long time going, well, can't I just get the whole thing for one price, you know? And I think as so many players now are so frustrated with companies. There's so much anger yeah. to do with companies now because they don't feel like they're their friends anymore. Yes. But Square Enix, you know, is my friend. They release a game, you know, and that used to be in the past, but now yeah. there's always a little transaction yeah. here and there, and I'm like, and we've kind of, we know not to trust the big companies. It's become that sort of scenario It now. sucks. Right? It sucks. Because in at the core are just game developers that are trying to build art and trying to build this incredible escape, uh, you know, an awesome entertainment. Do the arts of it and all that, the yeah. wonderful stuff there. But they're kind of, it's a, it's a sophisticated market. There's a real intelligence now around how much gamers are willing to spend. Yeah. And as long as there's a portion of that buying public that will just keep spending and spending, they're going to keep making product for there. And I say thank God for all the indie developers. I've been playing Owlboy and Celeste and uh, we're going to talk about some of the Cat Nindies. Cat Quest? Cat he Quest. Loves I, reviewed, Cat I reviewed Cat Quest. Can't get enough of the I, game. I just think it's cool that there's these, uh, these, these awesome sort of like you pay once, you get the whole thing experiences out there. It's not necessarily coming from too many of the uh, the big publishers. True. But the indie guys, that's their bread and it's butter It's kind of like the EA, you know, the heads of the company are saying we need this kind of money yeah. and DICE is just, they're trying to create an awesome game. So, I think, uh, like, say, say, like, DICE gets blamed yeah. for something that's not, honestly not their fault at yes, times. Yes, you know. But uh, bravo to Kratos and God of War. Good I cannot news. freaking really wait good, for really that Really good game. news. Uh, let's see, what else? Any, anybody got any questions or comments or anything, Blake? Have you seen anything? Uh, I want Jurassic World Alive where you try to hide from dinosaurs. Mm. It would be much more suspense. That is an excellent comment from Sean L. He doesn't so he'd be want... out in the world and he'd be trying to hide from them? Yeah, he doesn't want Pokemon... Jurassic it, it doesn't world. make any sense, does it? No. I mean, you. I, I guess you have to commoditize and commercialize these dinosaurs in, in some clever and cute ways, but it's it really diminishes the brand when you start sort of beach toweling it out like that. You diminishes know? the brand? Of <laughs> the, Jurassic World? Jurassic World's been going for so many years. The Jurassic series has been going, it's been okay. milked and, to death. And let's list all of the excellent Jurassic World. Park video games that have come out. Dino Crisis. The, the, see, I'm joking. Yes. It, it isn't obviously, right? but Capcom got it right with Dino Crisis. Actually, I would say the Lego, which flies in the face of my comment here, but Lego Jurassic World was actually really was fun. Good? But yes, because you could play as the dinosaurs, but it mm. sort of po poked uh, fun at all of this stuff. But that is a brand where you really could be running in terror from dinosaurs yes. and, and really freaked out, and there just haven't been good. Jurassic Park games. This is, this is a very casual Park. thing in mobile, right? Yes, nobody's I guess really going to go nuts about this. True, it's a it'll be forgotten about. It'll be forgotten about in a week. Uh, I didn't like the first Jurassic World, anyways. Neither did I. You know, I did you it, not like the movie? I did not like the movie. You thought, saw it with Marissa, didn't you? Back yeah, then? and we thought it was so pan. I, I, I was so did I. I was pissed off. Actually, she had I think had more fun with it because Chris Pratt's in it. Yeah, right. So right. She, it's, it's she was, fine. She was she was halfway there. Just I, well, sure. Okay. I I wasn't moved by the movie. I'm just like, no. oh my god, we're doing this again. Yeah, and we'll be doing it again. Jurassic World too. I yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we're gonna see that together. We'll see. This is the guy that got fired from Star Wars or left Star Wars. Colin Trevorrow. It's probably the best story ever. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Okay, let's talk about uh, Fortnite here for a second. I uh, just want to make sure I'm not missing... You're uh, missing everything. Uh, missing question. The question uh, from Feral81, why is Fortnite's 20-player team teams a limited thing? Uh, that's a great question. I would say that they're probably... like this is, this Testing is, it? Yeah, this is live game yeah, development, yeah. you know, personified or exemplified. This is a company that is just sort of getting data like you wouldn't believe. And if people love it and they're raving about it, then they'll make it a permanent thing. You yeah, know? yeah. Maybe they'll juice this to 200 people on the island or whatever. Epic is blown away. I can tell you this, mm. that uh, Epic is absolutely floored by the success of this game. I interviewed people at E3 last year before they were releasing uh, Fortnite in general, and it felt like they were just like, they'd been just like, not sleeping, but just working on this forever, and they were exhausted, and they were just like, let's get let's this out. Get, out. get it out of right. our lives. Right. You know, and I don't know if they were just hungover because it was E3 or whatever, but I got that sense like they were done 
talking about it. Like, Here, just take it. Make just it. Take it. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Battle Royale comes out, or the uh, uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and then Battle Royale becomes a thing, and then <laughs> they just capitalize on this. Everybody is playing Fortnite, and, yeah. and uh, I have a guy on Facebook. I'm not going to name him, but he's been in the, in the games industry for 20 years, and he's so staunchly against microtransactions and pay to win. That's and great. He hates that stuff. He worked yeah. at Sega and lots of developers over the years, and he's always on the case of all of these games that tr keep trying to pull money out of people. And he, I, which I, is nearly every game now. I know, and it gets a bit exhausting because he's got great commentary, and I, I, I share a lot of his his opinions around all this stuff. But it is like, oh man, you got to just. I, this is the same story from you again and I know, again. I know. But he didn't but, but say that say, about it, yeah. Fortnite. Uh, the, the What do they call the... Is it Battle Royale? Fortnite Battle... Yeah, he said the Battle Royale mode of Fortnite is actually pretty fair. You, yeah. you see what the dollar amounts are for what you want to get, and there isn't any kind of uh, hidden stuff. Uh, it's not really a What do you have to buy, thing. then? What do you have to buy? Uh, I think it's like... Uh, yeah, it's, it's all cosmetic Cosmetics, stuff uh, to yeah, make yeah. your character and stuff, but... I'll tell you, you and I should play that game together. You want to yeah. review that? Oh, uh, we could try it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we should check it out when's together. The, when's the embargo break on that? It's been out forever. Oh. Everybody's playing. Then who cares? <laughs> let's, let's play some new games. <laughs> well, I'm curious. Aren't you curious? I'd like to just play with you just for fun, just to see how it is. I'd like to try okay, it out. all right, yeah. okay. Maybe, you know what? We'll play, and then we'll have you back on EP yeah. Live, and we'll talk about it. Uh, Vic, any plans uh, on eventually doing some kind of meet and greet in Toronto or other cities or fans of EP? Leafs fan, I would love to do that. Um, I have been talking with people. Something almost came together, but it didn't come together. Fan Expo would be a good example of yes. something like that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I'm sure I'll be out in Toronto. Maybe I'll bring this guy, and we'll both go out to Toronto for something cool. Uh, okay, it's great to see everybody, by the way. Paul and, and the Wren and, uh, um, and Sean L. and Dude with the Gun and uh, Dan, Dan Scully. Is it Scully or Sully? <laughs> I think Scully, yes. Great. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Buchu says Jim Sterling with a question mark. Okay. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a big reviewer guy. Yes, I know. Jim. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't know that. Yeah, guy? Jim Sterling. Yes, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's what that's meaning, I guess. Oh, and now we've got Harley H saying, "I just want Di uh, Dice to make a battle royale game, a battlefield royale game." See what I did there? He's in the frostbite Ooh, engine. Nice, yeah, I think you can count on that. Mm -hmm. Actually, this year, and same with Call of Duty, battle royale is going to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're going to have it all over the place, probably even on the Switch. Uh, I think that's good. Those are the big ones. Is that it? Yeah, well, there's the... Uh, there's not a lot of huge gaming news coming out right now. Yeah, everybody's in sort of clampdown mode just before GDC. I think things start to pick up a little bit in a, in a few What's weeks. What's looking here. like for GDC for you? I'm still on the fence about whether we're going to do it or not. <sighs> yeah. it's. Uh, think of all the content. We there. could get a lot of content and I could meet a Back lot of folks. Back and forth. I know, but I, I'm also digging being in the studio and having yeah. people in yeah. and doing all of this chatting. So I... I'm, I'm contemplating it. I haven't made my final decision if I'm going to go or not. Uh, but I am going away uh, for a little quick vacation because uh, my kid's in uh, spring break. So, right, yes. Um, so that's also playing in that decision mm. as well. Uh, the, the Black Ops 3 news is a pretty big deal, though. The fact that that uh, Call of Duty is, uh, or Activision is still supporting that is pretty cool. That's pretty good for anybody still playing the game, which I'm sure, you know, some people, though, who start playing these shooting games, they're addicted and they only play that shooting game yes. for years. Yes, And they're, and they're upset when the game gets kind of like discontinued or the next big and game comes out. you're not like that? And I'm no, not well, like that. I, I used to be like that back when I was 14 years old, mm -hmm. and I get one game for the entire six months. Yeah. You know, at, at a time or even a year, I'd still be playing that game. Well, but, this is the thing that I've really come to realize. Yeah. Is like, like, you started this because you have a, you're a happy console gamer, and I started yeah. EP because we have this insatiable appetite oh, yeah. for <laughs> new things and new discoveries. New movies, and, new video games. You can't get enough. And even within games, like we want new levels and new characters yeah. and new modes within a specific thing. And if... Like I love Overwatch and I love Goldeneye and I love uh, you know Call of Duty and I love the Halo. I love them. They're amazing, but you know after you do five hundred matches, yeah. I, like I well, just don't see enough new stuff for me personally. You no, know, what it is about for for some younger people and people our age who are really yeah. get addicted to these games is you know memorizing every map and absolutely annihilating and camping your opponents <laughs> and sniping them from a distance they spawn they're dead they know the you... minutia yeah, yeah it feels so good and it's so fulfilling to yes. destroy people that way and i get that it's like going home but i i get I, I i want new that's my thing right yeah and that's why i'm not 
super hyped about this games of service and mm. things going on forever and ever. I like games with an ending. Yeah. I like the idea of completing something and putting it away and then maybe going back to revisit it. Yeah, kind of a, a classic example of, of how we play games is when we played Mario Odyssey. Yeah. You, at, you were at your place, I was at my place, 15 hours each, we annihilated the game yeah. that weekend just so we could review it. Uh -huh. You know, and then at the end I was like, I loved it, but I was like, I wouldn't. I didn't love it the way a regular person would like it. Yeah, they could take their time. I felt I had to really go, 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 go. Yeah, on sometimes it. that happens. For I sure. Yeah, that's the first. And I, it was only a little bit afterwards where I could really take in Mario Odyssey and yeah. enjoy it. I you know, a little I, bit more. And I know that like the reviewing element plays into that, but. I think that even if I was just a regular consumer, because I used to have every machine. Me too. And Always. I used to, like every month, and this is the genesis of Electric Playground, is like I had spent $300 a month on video You games. had a really good paper route, didn't you? I had a great paper <laughs> route. So that back in, in those early days, it was really rudimentary systems. But uh, by the time I was a working guy, working in a restaurant and waiting oh, and that, acting that, and yeah. stuff, I had some money. And so every month I was blowing a lot of money on, on cartridges. And uh, yeah, it was all cartridges at the time. I had it the was. Lynx. And the Sega and CD. The Se and the Sega CD yeah. and the uh, Super Nintendo. And You I, never had a Turbo Graphics. What was your issue? I, I eventually went and bought one of the uh, portable ones, but I never had the. Oh, the Turbo, Turbo Express. I, I went through a period where I was in, I was in uh, university and acting school and stuff. And That's no excuse. I just moved away. And then I went to a dedicated acting school and I got right into games and I used to use games as my. My, my impetus for channeling emotion for my characters. Oh my god. And I what? brought that up in class. What do you mean, how? How would that even work? Well, I would get super frustrated or super elated and I would remember that and, re and recall oh. that and, and, and then I would talk about that in class and everybody thought I was insane because <laughs> like nobody was god. using video you know, you games. Got, you're smashing the controller <laughs> yes. last night. You just reenacted that, that you were mad at something <laughs> in an acting class against another student during a play. Oh yes. That's wild. Well, That's, that's all so the, fast. The, I'm not an actor and I don't think in those terms so that's interesting. Oh yeah, you had to find, I used to follow people. I'd fly, I'd walk behind them and get their the way they would move, what? and I would take that character into class. Oh my god, and you were that creep walking down the street. Yeah, I was. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm an observer, man. Wow. And, and the, all that skill, all that stuff, that the stuff that I learned in the restaurant and all the acting stuff that helped me walk into what, what was the stuff that you learned? What was the stuff you learned in the restaurant? How did that help you in acting? Uh, well, it helped me with running my own business mm. and sort of keeping my my stuff together to kind of uh, present to anybody and right. talk with anyone and present an idea to anybody and, right. and be clear and concise about it. Because you're dealing with customers and you every have to be day. clear and, and, and you're running your own business and the yeah. way that they dealt with you directly influenced how much you walked out. And it was a pretty night. pretty pretty high class restaurant you were I, in. I worked in a jazz restaurant called the Elm Street Cafe, which was an right. amazing place in Vancouver. I had uh, Harry Connick Jr.'s band come in one night. Wow. Diana Krall used to play there all the time. Uh, Patrick uh, uh, McLovin or uh, McDreamy. <laughs> Mc, Mc, <laughs> no, McDreamy. McDreamy, <laughs> McDreamy from, from that show, the Grey's yeah. Anatomy show. I served yeah. him one night. And, and you served Rutger Hauer one Rutger night. Hauer, I, Rutger Hauer. Yeah, I yeah. met lots of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots, of, lots of famous people. That's amazing. Yeah, it was. And so uh, you talked to a lot of people and you had to use the. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I just skills. learned all that stuff. Amazing. Anyways, we went off on a big tangent. Had Let's to do it. <laughs> I want to hear that. <laughs> Let's take a look back at this day and everything cool. Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for March 7th. Here's something to call up. On this day in 1876, Alexander Graham Bell patented a new invention called the telephone. Unlike earlier devices like the telegraph, which could only transmit simple electronic signals, the telephone transmitted vocal sounds and other noises over a wire from one location to another, allowing users to have a normal conversation across great distances. Bell and other inventors kept advancing the technology, allowing signals to be transmitted over greater and greater distances, and in a few years, telephones began taking the world by storm. Instant telecommunication has obviously had a huge effect on humanity, tying people together in new ways and allowing the free movement of information like never before. March 7, 1983 was a hard day for the computer industry. IBM released their second personal computer known simply as the IBM Personal Computer XT, and it was their first machine to come with a built-in hard drive. Before that, hard drives were way too big to fit into most consumer computers, so the previous IBM PC didn't actually come with one, and instead forced users to run their operating system and save all their data on a series of external floppy disks. Putting the hard drive inside the computer allowed it to function like a normal computer 
does today, but it wasn't cheap. The IBM PC XT cost $5,000 for the base model, which in case you're wondering, only offered a 10 megabyte hard drive, 128 kilobytes of RAM, and 40 kilobytes of ROM. Thankfully, things have come down in price since then. Spending a lot of money on obsolete technology might burn you out and give you a desire for some revenge. On this day in 2006, the racing game Burnout Revenge was released on the Xbox 360 following its release on the PS2 and original Xbox a few months earlier. The Xbox 360 version offered better graphics and audio, and thanks to the improved hardware, also had more realistic crash physics. The 360 version also had better online multiplayer, showcasing what the new system could do in the online space. The popularity of early 360 games like Burnout Revenge helped give the 360 a strong start and allowed it to keep the lead after its biggest rival, the PS3, was released later that same year. Oh my god, watching Burnout, I just want to reach into the controller and play this game, or reach into the screen and play this game. It's just a classic game. I incredible, love it. Incredible, yeah. incredible. Uh, thank you all for your comments and questions. Remember, if you want to uh, ask us stuff, put it in all caps, and we'll get to some of those things in our Let's Play and uh, <laughs> chat later. Uh, but uh, before we do that, we had a pretty interesting... Uh, uh, sort of collaboration here. Johnny went to New York Comic Con. Yeah, I went to New York Comic Con. I went with Baruti. Yep. And we're walking around, and I didn't go for this reason, but I see Koji Garashi there, the Bloodstain booth. Yeah. And I was talking to the PR guy, and he's like, do you want to interview him? And I'm like, absolutely. I'm like, of course I want to interview him. So that night I sat up, and I read every single thing about him. I had tons and tons of questions. I had some really crazy questions, and um, I asked him all of them. I was nervous about interviewing him, but it was so wonderful. I channeled my inner Victor Lucas <laughs> and just kind of went for it, he's and a, it was fun. He's a great guy, and you've done a panel with him. He's a pro. I've known that guy for a long time and talked to him many times over the years, of course, for Castlevania stuff. And I did do a panel at PAX last year with him. Yeah. A, a wonderful dude. I'm, I'm looking forward to this game. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to Bloodstain being something that's separate from Castlevania and can stand apart. It's own, its own thing, for yeah. sure. But uh, we've, got a, we've got an interview right now with uh, Koji... Igarashi, and it was uh, by Johnny Millennium. I'm Johnny Millennium, and I'm at Comic Con, New York City, and I'm here with the great Iga of Bloodstained fame, but no most notably from Symphony of the Night, and I'm I'm fanboying quite a lot here, and I just want to say I'm a huge fan of your work. I've loved Symphony of the Night since I played it, and I just want to say to you, ask you a quick question. What is it like knowing that Castlevania Symphony of the Night is 20 years old? はい、えっと、まずえっと、シンフォニーオブザナイトを <laughs> okay, first of all, thank you for supporting our game and um, thank you for playing Symphony of the Night and also being a fan. And, um, you know, when you said that it's already been 20 years, um, I, I didn't realize how long it's been since I've been <laughs> that I've, we've been developing uh, Symphony of the Night, so that's, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> I, I feel a lot older myself now and... Uh, what is it like working on Bloodstains compared to Symphony of the Night? What is the differences? まあ、えっと、なんだろう、その探りながらっていうよりは、どちらかというとコーダよねっていうもう、えっと、なんですかね、もう大体もう分かってることはもう最初から分かってるっていうのは感じなので、そういう意味では全然その作り方が大きく変わってるかなとは思
So um, this is the first time I was making a, um, an action or like a exploration based side scroller. And during that time, the staffs were um, they they knew a lot about action games, but this was also their first time making an exploration based action game. So we all kind of just like um, we were trying to find out what makes uh, a side scroller and what makes an exploration based uh, action game. But for Bloodstain, um, it, we we both we previously made a lot of Castlevania games, and we we had a lot of um, experience on our backs. So um, making Bloodstain, it was a lot more um, like, oh, this is what makes this certain genre or this kind of game. So we were really used to it. So in that way, it's a little bit different from uh, working back then on Symphony of the Night and Bloodstain. Right. Perfect. So there's a lot of people playing your game today. Do you listen to a lot of their feedback from the people on the floor actually playing it? And how have you implemented some of those uh, responses from people? まあ、ま、あの、so yes, we do um, listen to everyone's feedback, and um, we see people playing it, and we, we um, want to incorporate that in our game. But um, we only incorporate certain feedbacks that we also agree with. Oh, hey, oh, th you found out that, you know, we, we thought about that too. So if, if there's these kind of feedbacks that we thought as well, um, we will definitely um, fix that or, like, you know, improve it, um, you know, during the development. But if it's something like uh, we don't agree with that, like, we, we, we'll, we like your comment, but, like, you know, it's something that we'll, we'll, we'll take as an opinion, right. but it's definitely like uh, something that we wouldn't incorporate. But that's how we um, kind of like listen to everyone's feedback. And uh, yeah, that's how it's yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people want to know, when is this game out? It's the number one question that fans want to know. And I'll just put that directly to you. はい、まだ詳細は言えないんですけれども、来年のですね、えっと、ま、前半の方に出したいなというふうには思ってます。So、um, how do you go in with that kind of pressure on yourself making this game? And what are you doing to make it the best that you can make it for the fans? はい、とは言うものの自分たちができることってかなず限られてることなのであのまあとりあえず自分たちがこうあったらえっとみんなハッピーだよねみたいなのをえっと自分たちで考えながらえっとまあそこに全力を尽くすっていうこと以外ないのかなっ
it's, it's just that, uh, like, how should I say, um, like a pressure of Kanjinai, you know, more. Yeah, pressure of Kanjitemasu. Yeah, he was like, yeah, I do feel pressure, though. Of course, of course. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah, um, <laughs> so he feels that oh it's not as different as before. Yeah, for sure, so, for sure, yeah. for sure. What is your favorite part of this game that you want fans to experience and to take away with them from playing the demo and the full game? あ、そうですね。あの、まずえっと、昨今、ま、あの、インディとかで結構えっと、増えてはいるんですけれども、やっぱりその so we want when um, they play Bloodstained, uh, we want them to feel that oh, this is like a video game because um, you know nowadays there's a lot of indie games that are you know that are based off of this genre and also you know like AAA titles that are very cinematic. Um, we want them to feel that oh, this is the kind of game that we we feel very comfortable. Um, this is the kind of action game that makes what video games are because um, a lot of times uh, there's a lot of mobile games that are be trending right now and uh, yeah this is like the traditional kind of game that we want people to feel when they play the game. I want to say I'm so thankful you got a, got away from mobile gaming and were able to make a traditional side-scrolling Castlevania game. I want to thank you for all the fans out there, for just me and my friends alone who played Symphony of the Night when we were kids. It was the greatest game we'd ever played and the music, everything was amazing. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, we're back. We're back? Yes. Just like that. Yes. I, I said, Don't worry, Vic. I'll take yeah, charge. I got this. I got It'll this. It'll be fine. The one thing that I want to say about Koji Igarashi. <laughs> yes. The guy is so tall. Everybody yeah. always says to me, yeah. Johnny, like, you know, what size are you? I'm like, I'm 5'9", nearly 5'10", or whatever. Yeah. But he's the tallest Japanese guy I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> he's huge, right? He is. He's big a very guy, tall guy. Very guy. Very big guy. I'm just watching our reaction, our dead-eyed stare. <laughs> <laughs> it's like called the dead space on, in, on, on the radio. You have one dead air. <laughs> that is the beauty of live, man. Who cares? This is awesome. Not a big uh, deal. Okay, so it was the um, the one year anniversary of the Nintendo Switch uh, over the weekend, and Nintendo sent out some stuff. There's some uh, cool contests that Nintendo Canada was running where you could win all the amiibo, and I, what? I tweeted about it. Yeah. Oh wow. Which is nuts. Like all everyone, of them, every like, single from one. the very first, 140 from Villager up, all, all of them. Which is crazy. I don't know if that's still going. I think I turned them down. I'm like, I don't want your your disease, man. <laughs> I, I was already I, addicted to this. I will take them all and a new apartment to put them in. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like people <laughs> offering, hey, please take free heroin. It's like no. Uh, but the Switch uh, celebrated one year, and I thought uh, Johnny just did this fantastic video on Happy Console Gamer. You guys should all watch it, uh, where he talked about his feelings and impressions of, of the Nintendo Switch. I thought this would be a nice way for us to kind of uh, rally together. Yeah, because I think. The launch of this machine is is so intrinsically tied to us getting to know each other and yes. hang out, right? Yeah, it was like, just around that time. Yes. Uh, we saw the commercial, and yeah. we were all like, wow, look at this commercial. Look yeah. what we can do with this thing. Yeah. And then you got the launch unit early. Yeah, I've been play working and, and playing with Nintendo for many, many years, yeah. and they said, we've got your Switch for you. Do you know how many people are so jealous? Because I remember uh, taking a picture of me and you, yeah. holding it, yes. and everybody on my Instagram was losing their minds. That was a, everybody was hyped for this machine, right? Yeah, well, not, yeah. not initially, and myself included. And I, You, know, you were I, hyped? I, I was... I was hyped oh, you're to see. Are coming out the Wii, the Wii U? You kind of there'll be a Wii U too. Here, here was my thought on the Switch when I saw all of the stuff attached to it. I thought, I, like nobody does that with iOS. Like I always got made fun of when I would bring a controller with my iPad, because right. I've been doing that for years. The yeah. M5 controller, even before M5. And uh, I thought, are people going to really want a tablet that they're going to have to slide in and attach all of these little extra things? And won't you lose this? And won't you lose... But when you get it, and actually it was the event that they had in Toronto, which was uh, the best event that Nintendo Canada has ever put together. 
Uh, and it was wonderful. It was like a mini E3, got to play everything, got some real hands-on time. I was blown away by the yeah. machine, and then I was super hyped. But up until that time, even the January video launch that went around, oh, I was wow. like, okay, the games look kind of cool, and I was very hyped to play Zelda, but yeah. Zelda was also a Wii U game. But man, when you sat down and played with these things, and you played with the Joy-Con, and they had like this airplane set up where I was uh, testing Mario Kart as if I were on an airplane, it really became something But did you, incredible. like, were you not so hyped because of the Wii U? Kind of wasn't that big of a no, huge success? I, you... I, I think it, it was just, um, not necessarily, I wasn't, I wasn't, like, I'm excited about all the new things that yeah, come yeah, out yeah. down the pipe, but I was like, I wasn't going to let myself get, you know, carried away and mm -hmm. super enthused until I actually got my hands on. And the Wii right. U, I think, was a bit of a, not necessarily... Yeah, I mean, I think they had some great software. The games it, are great. Yes. But the, the tablet was a little bit uh, iffy. It, it didn't last very long. And my it, wife would be playing it. It'd be dead in a couple hours. And it didn't just, sell. And that made yeah. a huge difference. You know, like people just weren't talking about it. It didn't sell. It didn't matter to most people out there. And and uh, that, you know, unfortunately infects how you feel about the machine as well, even but if it, it has good solid But it's material. interesting. I think Nintendo was kind of like Sega coming after the Dream, you know, yeah. coming after, sorry, the, the Sega 32X and the Saturn. Yes. And they kind of burned their britches with the, you know, with the crowd out there. And everybody's like, I, I don't, I'm not buying another Dream, and I'm, I'm not buying a Dreamcast. I'm yeah. not supporting Sega. I don't trust them. And I think a lot of people were having that attitude with the Nintendo. Yeah. I don't really trust them. And then all of a sudden you start playing the Switch and all of a sudden it kind of sucks you in and all the whole year, wow, well, I'm not kidding you. It, comes, it was an amazing year. It was, and it comes down to the software and of their, it does. their aggressive stance, not only with their own first party lineup, but also working with independent developers, which yes. I think are a, a huge part of the ingredient of the success of the Switch. Yeah. The, and indies are everywhere, so it's not like they own access the to these space, games. I know, no. but the Switch is an amazing game for these indie escapes. Yes. It's a great machine for that. Yes. Because they're bite-sized and by nature, a big chunk of them, and having a machine that you carry with you and you play a little bit on a train I think or... People are, like, people are sick of hearing it. Yeah. It's like, like, every time I do a review, I'm like, I love it because it's portable. Yes. But... That's it part of it. Is, and yes. it is. And it is a huge component. Yes. In fact, in my kind of review of the year, I kept saying, you know, be able to take uh, like Zelda yep. into a forest. And everybody's like, why would you go into a forest? Why would you say that? I'm like, well, I'm just trying to <laughs> you, you, state it. But you can. Yeah. You can. And in the summer, I did. Yeah. Well, and honestly, yeah. that, that has always been a dream of mine. I've been a portable game player forever. And Nintendo sort of introduced us to that idea with the Game Boy. I've always carried portable, portable game yeah, systems yeah. around. Always. And now you can have that same experience and bring it everywhere. But there, you know, there were games like SteamWorld Dig, which I'm showing a little bit of right now. Uh, yeah. SteamWorld Dig 2 and, and the first one are both available on the Switch right now. Absolutely outstanding gameplay. It's, sim it's similar to and familiar to anybody that's played any kind of Metroidvania, but it just was a perfect, perfect fit. It was a great home for I this machine. I haven't played this game, but it looks amazing. It's I'm incredible. It right it's, yeah. it's like fusing Dig Dug with a little Metroid and, and uh, some, you know, some funny, witty dialogue and cool characters and awesome power-ups. Yeah, yeah. And cool little mystery. And great and mystery. Kind of great yeah, stuff. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's funny, though. i got to come back, though. When we started the year, like yeah. in 2000, we, we didn't think that Zelda was going to be your favorite game, the Breath of the Wild was yeah. going to be your favorite game of all time, yes. and my favorite game of all time. We didn't know that when he got the unit, and you were playing it, and I was I was coming over in the middle of the day. I felt like a kid knocking the door, and yeah. I was saying, can I play Breath of the Wild? It was and awesome. You'd, yeah, you'd let me in, and I would play that game. You'd be working on a video, and I was like, this is amazing. And then I picked up my own copy, and I was like, this is really amazing. Well, what the what the Z Breath of the Wild really proved is that you can pretty much throw almost anything at this system and it's going to be able to handle it. And yeah. I think that we kept playing game after game with that that moment of, oh, this is going to creak or grind to a halt and it's well, it not going to Well, it did. It did remember uh, it, the frame rate would die mm. on the thing. It would go, do, 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 do. But they fixed it. Mm -hmm. They fixed it, I think, about a month after launch. Yeah. And said so that was nice. So now I don't have anything to complain about. That was my only thing to complain about when Link would be running in the forest and the uh, the, the grass and just go. Sometimes, Great. yeah. It I, broke a lot on me. Yeah, I, I was okay it with it. But it. But it was, I mean, still, incredibly. It's fixed now, but it was a problem at launch. But also an incredible 
incredibly robust launch title. And then after that, it was a bunch of other titles I that we would play. I thought once you switched to Game of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is the game that we don't speak of. Yeah, that's the uh, game we don't talk about. Uh, <laughs> oh, once you switch, we had high hopes, and it was once you switch. That was a little bit of the uh, the Wii shovelware kind oh, of mentality. Oh, but I love the cow milking game. I, I'm still playing oh, that do, game. Yeah, Every day. Yeah, yeah. Every day. It's just it's good to keep, keep things moving, uh, right? <laughs> that was a disappointment. For sure. Doom, I think, was maybe one of the games where it was, wow. okay, put up or shut up with this thing. And it is... Uh, you know, a hardware kind of hit. It's not as good. Well, to, uh, yeah, on to, the uh, on your console, on it's a, not good, yeah. but. But on, the, you know, on, on portable, it looks it's amazing. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Down, it looks great. Just the idea that you've got a game that's this gory and this fast that you can run around with. But you know, again, it was just like, okay, what game is not going to be able to handle, or, or the machine? What game are they going to put out that won't be able to run properly on this? Yeah. And when you run a game that's as sophisticated and complex and fast as this on the Switch, it's like, well, I guess you can do a lot you of can. different things. Yeah, right? for sure. You, like, you're going to have like you're going to have a dip in some of the frame rate and stuff like that. But that's expected, right? I'm expecting that. Well, you 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 can forgive it for it because it is that. It's, sure. I mean, in the sense, I, I can forgive it when I'm in portable mode. Yes. And I'm like, I'm playing Doom on portable. This is great. I mean, But the Vita is really good too, you know? The Vita was good, it yes. Was, the Vita is still good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the, the, still the good. thing that the Vita got wrong though is that it wasn't really a PS3 and it wasn't I really know. a PS4. I, well, the, the and, problem and was, we just, all we, wanted that. We you all know? wanted that, yeah. You know, and the fact that you know you could take uh, Zelda everywhere and Mario Odyssey everywhere. Uh, I wanted to show a little Skyrim there. Where do I have it? Right here. There you go. Um, th I mean, this was a big part of the Nintendo Switch kind of reveal because this is obviously such a beloved game and it's massive and it's open world. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, you're taking a bit of a a visual sort of hit comparative to the best that's out there's a definitive edition you can you can run this in 4K this was when, everywhere. This was from the commercial. This was uh, the guy sitting on the plane yeah. playing Skyrim and that was like, "Wow, you can do that?" Yes. And that was really exciting. That I that this is what sold me on as well. Yeah, and, and then there's like, "No, no, no, we don't know if this is coming on the machine." And then and they then throw I'll, in a link version of uh, the main character. Pretty neat. Yeah. Which, which was which Novelty. was really rad, right? Novelty, but, but fun. Y y and I think all of those things sort of coupled together kind of showed off that this was a machine that maybe didn't have all of the horsepower of the other ones out there, but it had so many pluses for it. And then Nintendo did a smart thing with not only uh, releasing Super Mario Odyssey, which, and, was, which was excellent, Zelda, excellent, Mario Kart 8, excellent ports, arms. arms, loved arms. We have, bring up arms here. Let's have yeah. a chat about arms because... I'll be honest with you. I thought ARMS, when I first saw it, was going to be one of those, you know, like Wii, Wii U wear games, you know, like a, just one of those budget titles that you download on your machine. Yep. It's going to be crud. Yeah. I really thought that. Like, and then I started playing it, and I'm like, wow. And, this is and you and I played this together online well, together. Well, no, I was playing it. You were losing. I remember yeah. that was <laughs> okay. happening. It was going back and yeah, forth. I we were both throwing I, you through I, uh, pillars well, over and over and again. The only thing that sucked about that experience... It actually was fun for us yeah, playing that together, yeah. but it was we had to Skype on separate yeah, we, machines. Right. We didn't we, have we, the online thing going through. Like we couldn't hear each other, see each other through the game itself. We had to have our we phones. We FaceTime going yeah. on, and that but, worked. But that was amazing. That's worth it. Hell. <laughs> because when I kicked your ass, oh, I could see this the guy. disappointment in your eyes. The switch has been a year of disappointment for Vic in the losing department. <laughs> you did kill me in uh, in pocket po po and, po and, and arms and I, in Mario Kart. I got you in arms and in Mario Kart. I, I said clearly we need Absolute a uh, a rematch of that. We'll be playing a little bit of arms, uh, man. Rocket League in a little bit. Yeah. Here. Oh, I'm so. scared actually. <laughs> That could be a little bit but ridiculous. But Street Fighter, you crushed me in that. Oh, Street Fighter is a non-issue. Yes. Yeah, but that's a non-issue for me for you. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was going to show Rayman Legends as well, which was another phenomenal uh, forgotten game already. That's the thing, right? There's already been so many. There are buried treasures on the Switch. Oh, it's, how can it be in the first year? It's been a year. And I have There's even so much this. software that's so good. And again, this is better on other machines. Or there's there there you, know, you know people have talked about there being even more content, even though this is called a definitive edition on other platforms. But you can't walk around with fidelity like well, that. I'm it I get looks always incredible. so sick of saying it, the, but it's, it is the truth. The Vita is great, though, too. Yeah. And there was a Vita version of this one as well. Right. Oh, rest in peace, Vita. <laughs> uh, but the other game was the uh, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which you also showed... Really, I, do you know, I'm not sounding like a hater, but I, 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 I love the aesthetics. I love the characters. Yeah. I just wasn't, wasn't, your game. wasn't my style of yeah. game at all. I, I enjoyed it. I, 
I remember I kind of gave it like a 7 out of 10, and people were like, oh, my God, but John is like XCOM. I'm like, I haven't even played XCOM. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I yeah. couldn't play everything. Yeah. Um, but look at the characters. It's beautiful. It's really, really nice looking stuff. But yeah. It wasn't for me. You really liked it. I love this game. Yeah. Yeah, because it does offer a, a level of complexity that's sort of uh, disguised by its cutesiness. Yeah, it's just a stra it's strategy game. Yeah, that's and you, yeah, you, you take your time and you 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 know you put the right combination of weird characters out there with the right armament, and it's so fun. And it is accessible and cute. My kid. That's the other thing too. Is so many of these experiences I was able to share with my child. And, yes. and Ruby watched me play Legend of Zelda from start to finish. Oh yeah, she's she really was, into it when I come over. I and, remember she'd always be ranting and raving and, about it. And she was recounting different parts of the thing. And she was, you know, entertained and engaged again and again and again. Yeah. And I think that also played into my enjoyment of the machine overall. And Splatoon was really good Splatoon as well. Splatoon was incredible as well. Uh, yeah. I had little cousins that were always telling me to to play it. They, they, they played the first one I'll oh, play it yeah. and I didn't like the gyroscope controls me neither and then all of a sudden I got the pro controller and I started playing it and I was like yes this yeah. is the way I want to play it yeah, super just, fun. this is a personal preference this is I a just, game though too like we were talking about like I've been dying to get back to this and sort of get into the community and I know I've watched in your video there are people that have played a thousand uh, hours a thousand hours it, on my friends list It's and I know I mean like I see Bill Trinan who, who we both know from Nintendo yeah. he's uh He's always playing this game. Is he still? Always. Yeah, he's always online. He's probably got all game. the cheat codes going on, <laughs> all the mods going on. Yeah, it's super. Yeah. I mean, that's. I, I guess this is a Nintendo fan's version of Overwatch, right? Yeah. It'll be interesting. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Overwatch on the Switch at E3. Yeah. Running well, pretty there, well. There, there's a Nintendo Direct tomorrow. Right. We at might 2 o'clock our time. We might see something. I'm, I'm hoping for our, an Animal Crossing. But the, this was another uh, oh revelation within its first year. Dragon Quest Builders. I remember playing this on the PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. Loving it. Played it with Ruby. Oh, she did, did she flipped like out. She, yeah. she, she couldn't believe that we could build things. This was a much easier... Um, sort of craft and build thing for her to wrap her head around than Minecraft, oh, which really? looked so. I mean, it's uh, Minecraft's amazing, but it's so esoteric. It's so weird when you put, put in all of these characters yeah. that she can see are these cartoon creations. Uh, she loved it. She thought this was sensational. <laughs> well, well, my wife, yeah. Abs Kim, she loved this game. I mean, yeah. and, uh, all she talks about now is when's the second one coming out? When's yeah. the it's out she, soon. She, it's, it'll be on Switch too. Is it? Yep. Is it on Switch as well? Yep. Is that 100% confirmed? Yep. yep. Oh, wow. It's coming okay. to everything. Um, but I remember playing the PlayStation 4 game going, God, I would love this on the Switch. Yeah. And then it, I did. It works. It works really well. And I find myself thinking that a lot. It's like, I love this game, if, especially if it's a kind of yeah. a, an indie game, but I would prefer to play it on a on the Switch so I can pick up and play well, everywhere. I wish it on every system so we could all pick and choose how we want to play it. Yes. So I can say, okay, hardware-wise, yeah. I want it on PS4 Pro or Xbox One X yeah. you because know, I want the optimal performance. Or I really want it as a portable game. I'll take a bit of a hit yeah. and take it portable. That's great, too. This is a game that I've just been getting into. It's called oh. Celeste. I've got my review coming, so I'm not going to spoil it too much. But I played a little bit on uh, EP uh, Live the other day. And uh, it's it's an, another one of these sensational fits, you know. It's another indie game, and it's out on everything. Uh, but it just looks like Super Meat Boy. Right? A, a little bit, yeah. yeah this is made by the way. guy that made Towerfall and some oh. other folks. And and uh, again, it's another one of these games that just seems to sing on the Switch. I, I suffice to say, yeah. I think this is the strongest launch of any oh, console in, in history. That's unbelievable. Right? And a Mario, a Zelda yeah. in the first year, a Mario Kart, yep. Xenoblade, Chronicles X yep. in the first year. Yeah. All these indies that they've worked out reasonable deals with so that they're attracted to. And every time you go into the eShop, I don't know if this is this is true for you, but mm. every time Aren't you astounded by how many games There's are al many. Oh, already yeah. there? Like oh, yeah. and so like we, there are too many. I actually have so there, many companies. There, we can't keep up. I have with so all many companies that get emails saying, yeah. "Hey, can we send you this game to review?" And I'm yeah. just like, I can't even. Respond. There's so much. Yeah. You so, know? but that's good though. That's a, it's a positive I mean, thing. It's the act. It's the uh, you know the what? inverse of what happened on the I Wii U. I do have a big question for you. Yeah. What do you think? We're in the second year of the yeah. Nintendo Switch. What do you think this is going to be like? Are, we, are you looking forward to it? It's not as powerful as that first year, though. I don't know if they can. I mean, I tomorrow so. might be an indicator, and it'll be interesting yeah. to uh, to talk about that in the rundown tomorrow. But the uh, uh, they got a lot of heat now to figure it out. Labo is coming. It's Labo, right? 
Is it Labo? Nintendo yeah, Labo. Yeah. yeah, the the, yeah. the cardboard um, uh, sort of game. Yeah, we'll get you the whole bodysuit. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna try it. Absolutely. I'm totally. Yeah. I can't wait, and yeah. I know I can't wait to sort of play that with uh, with Ruby as well. But uh, um, they've got that, and and a lot of mysteries. They've got Kirby coming out, and they've got Donkey Kong coming out, and we know that Chocolate Metroid's Freeze, on the way. Yeah, Metroid. Whenever. Yes. Pokemon's supposed to come out. Whenever. Yeah, and Animal Crossing. Like all of these brands have been, you know, intimated and Fire whispered. Fire Emblem eventually. Yeah. But. We don't know what's next. And we also don't know what the sort of portable plans are for the 3DS. It's still stel- selling really strong. That's the other thing, too, is like there's mm. a lot of 3DS experiences that I, I, I almost wish I could take that exact game and just put it on this bigger well, screen, yeah. Yeah, you know? Totally. It's, yeah, it's uh, but they're different too. Like I just had the um, uh, uh, Brian from Image and Form send me a code for uh, Steam, uh, 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 Dig, uh, Steam World Dig Two right. for the 3DS, and yeah, he wow. and he said that he prefers playing it on the 3DS because he the, like that's where the Steam World Dig One really had its most success. It was ported to other machines, oh, wow. but they scale to that system to the 3ds so he's happy with that version yeah of the and, and, that he fun, and he says I, I prefer playing that game when i'm in bed to the to the switch because yeah. the switch is even a little bit i think bigger. the 3ds is still amazing the backlog yep. on all the games yep. you can still play is great but i think nintendo's ramping it down now i think they are and i i feel like it this is a good horse to bet on with the switch yeah right like it, it's working clear, for them now yeah clearly everybody wants this machine it's still selling like like you know hotcakes there is so much software to enjoy on this machine. And think about the future, the Switch yeah. XL. Not this year, as we, you covered, actually, on the, yeah. the rundown a little bit ago, but we're going to see the Switch XL and more powerful versions of it going forward. Do you want to score the, the launch year, the first year? I don't know if we've ever done this before. Do you want to score? When the next one? No, like... It, it, oh, it, the, oh, out of 10? Yeah, out of 10. What would you give it? You know this is going to be amazing. Yeah. I'd actually give it a 10. Me too. I, is that nuts? <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because it's Nintendo. Like, it was a really good year. Yes. Every month there's, like, another huge game coming out. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's phenomenal. We know we sound like the Nintendo hype channel right now, but... I know. Uh, I, I, that's why I said. Yeah. You know, this is not sponsored by Nintendo. Like, I really... I've enjoyed their games, you know, last year. They, they really have crushed it. However, they put that together, because clearly they did not have that <laughs> machine together with the Wii U line. <laughs> they did not have any of these pieces I working, think, I think in and their then, hearts, boom, they got it all working. You know? In their hearts, they did, though. <laughs> the heart, in their hearts, they, uh, they did. But we got we got the best year. Zelda, Mario, wow. So good. And, so good. And, and I, I think we have yet to see what the influence and the success of this machine really means. Yeah. And we will by June of this year. We're, we're about to see, because it's been quiet, you know, like the news hasn't been huge. Tomorrow. And tomorrow, I think the no, like noise starts happening. F-Zero, Original Masters That says, would be fantastic. Yes. Yeah, what do you guys want to see on the Nintendo Switch? Let's talk we're, about that when, we, when we're playing in our sh- Let's sure, Play let's and Chat. That. But uh, right now, we've got a, a Reviews on the Run segment for you. This is Gotham by Gaslight. Warner Brothers and DC Comics are keeping us entertained with lots of cool animated features. The latest one that I've been able to check out is Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Now, this is based on an old comic tale, uh, based on the Elseworlds imprint. I remember buying that comic and reading that comic a long time ago and loving it. And uh, this is, I think, one of the first times that we've seen Batman in kind of an alternate universe, if we don't count the uh, Batman Beyond animated series and movie that came out. And this is a very gothic-oriented Gotham City, uh, Batman in sort of the Victorian era, and he goes up against Jack the Ripper. No. No. No! Batman has to kind of hunt this guy down and figure out who he is and take him down because he's Batman. Bruce Wayne is still a super rich guy in the city and he's, uh, you know, uh, very benevolent and taking care of all kinds of people. Uh, he's got a really deep connection to um, Sister Leslie who runs this, uh, this uh, basically this home for the impoverished. And there's lots of street kids running around, some of them committing crimes for uh, lots of scumbags. There's lots of scumbags in Gotham. That's why Batman is so necessary. <laughs> So Batman is taking care of regular street crime, as he does, and then he's confronted with this uh, serial killer that is just uh, creating all kinds of gruesome horror all around his beloved city. And this movie doesn't hold back. There's lots of violence. There's lots of, uh, you know, uh, sort of grotesque scenery. One of the most 
horrifying depictions, especially in an animated movie of Arkham Asylum that I've ever seen. It's really creepy. Um, and there's, you know, even kids are swearing in this movie. Bruce Greenwood plays our Batman, and I think he does a terrific job as Batman. He's done it before. I mean to rid Gotham of the Ripper. And I think he's got the right sense of gravitas, the right gravelly voice. He's got a good timber. He's no Kevin Conroy, but he does a damn good job. And I want to give him an extra special thumbs up because he's a Vancouver boy. Uh, good job, Bruce, uh, as Bruce. And uh, we've got Jennifer Carpenter, who used to be uh, one of the leads on Dexter. She is playing Selena. Kyle and she's terrific in this. You're studying me. You're a fascinating subject. Uh, so the voice acting is really solid all the way through. You're gonna hear Yuri Lowenthal and lots of other voice actors that you've known and love and lots of things. Uh, you know DC and Warner Brothers have employed a lot of these actors over the years. They know what they're doing and so do the directors and the writers and the animators. They've got this down and I think that they had a lot of fun crafting this uh, Victorian era Gotham City for these characters to populate and explore. <laughs> And there's, you know, some nice twists and surprises in this story. If uh, you've never read this book before or don't know anything about Gotham by Gaslight, I think it's going to raise some eyebrows for sure, which is a good thing. And I think one of the joys of this is sort of, and all of the Elseworlds books and stories, is sort of connecting the the uh, this sort of uh, thematic tissue and the uh, and the narrative tissue and, and sort of going, oh, this character used to do this, but he, in this setting he's doing this, or this character should have been been doing but they're not doing that this time and, and it's fun so the the creators get to ha have fun with all of these um, archetypes and all of these really iconic characters that we've known through years and years of Batman lore. Uh, I will tell you that the audio uh, and sound design is absolutely stupendous in this movie. I had it cranked on my home theater and it just sounded incredible. <laughs> I also had this as a 4K file. I downloaded this movie off of iTunes and watched it uh, through the uh, Apple TV 4K on a 4K screen. It looked great. Um, certainly you can kind of pick out uh, where some costs were saved in terms of animation and some background art and stuff like that, but the money shots are there. There's lots of fire effects and explosions and, you know, lots of really fun little pieces. And also Batman's technology is really cool. Like he's got a gas-powered grappling gun and uh, it, it's just fun to watch, you know, when they mix it up like this and they absolutely have. Gotham by Gaslight is terrific entertainment. It's an absolute blast for any Batman fan out there. I had so much fun watching this stuff. Well, you're clearly a real gentleman. Great job, Warner Brothers and DC. I'm going to give Gotham by Gaslight an 8.5 out of 10. Having a pretty fun show today, and right now we're going to talk about a game you've probably forgotten about with our buried treasure. I've got an awesome buried treasure today. Back in 2012 on the PlayStation 3, there was a little game called Starhawk that came out, which was kind of like a spiritual sequel to Warhawk. Warhawk was uh, somewhat successful. It was a cool, you know, flying shooting game, which was a, a remake or a, a revisit to a brand that Sony actually had on the very first PlayStation 1, and then they brought a PlayStation 3 game out, and then Starhawk was supposed to answer a lot of Warhawk's disappointments, most notably a single-player campaign or a single-player story. And it does have a, a, you know, it's an okay one. It's a little cheese ball, but it kind of gives you the, the setup for why you're fighting against these uh, these rifters on this uh, planet called Dust. Uh, gave you a lot of the flying mechanics and stuff. It was basically a Warhawk in space, but you also got uh, some ground combat, some third-person action-adventuring and combat. Uh, you also had the ability to craft environments and almost give you a pseudo RTS style of uh, injection into the gameplay. And it was super cool, super fun, and it was instantly forgotten and ignored by most of the gaming public out there. And I don't know what the reason was behind that. The destruction was plentiful, the effects were cool, but you know, it was really, I, I just dig the ship to ship combat and flying around. There was a robust multiplayer component in there, and I'm sure all of that is long dead now on the server side. But it's still worth checking out, especially for you PlayStation completists out there and anybody that's a student of video games. Because this game didn't succeed, there were no sequels. We haven't really heard much from the Hawk franchise that Sony has. Uh, but it's unfortunate because Starhawk was really cool, and it's absolutely a buried treasure. Told you you'd forget about that game, Starhawk, for the PS3. Super cool experience. Uh, you know, I've had that in my real basement sort of game nook sitting there to go back to on my PS3 ever since that game came out. 
Uh, I have not had time to go back to it. Uh, Johnny and I are playing a little uh, uh, Switch. I almost said Wii U. Uh, <laughs> since, we, since we talked about uh, the Switch so much today, and uh, we thought this would be a, a nice way to wrap it up. We're playing a little bit of... Uh, uh, Rocket League. I've on, never played this before, he's, ever. He's never... Uh, see, he's got the qualifiers already. <laughs> um, that score that he has got up there for the... Because he, he's on the orange side, I'm in the Batmobile on the blue side. That score is actually me scoring on my own net, so that doesn't even qualify. Yeah, that makes complete <laughs> sense for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to set the timer for 15 seconds, uh, and if you've got any comments or questions or anything... Or 15 minutes, sorry. If you've got any comments or questions about uh, anything, just let us know. Oh, really? Yeah. That's okay. okay. There's, there's no audio from the game at all? No, none at all. Well, all no. it is is me going yahoo oh, in the game. I don't think so, and I don't even know if I turned off the uh, the music. Hold on one second here. You don't, you don't hear anything, huh? No. Let's see. Bloody rotten kids. Nope, I did not take off the music. Let me do that. That's weird. It's all right. It's all, it's Pe yeah, people can people can see it. There's uh, there's more than one person talking. Hey, I'm so. just learning how to play this game anyway, <laughs> so it's fine. I have no idea what I'm doing. Johnny, it has been incredible to have you here today, buddy. Can it's you, been a lot of fun, yeah. Can you come back every day? Uh, every day I'll be here. I'll okay. be here at 6 in the morning, okay. dusting all of your figures over to the left here. <laughs> yeah. You know, counting your Batmans to make sure none are P missing. Please count the Batmans. Yeah. How many do I have? You know, here's the thing that nobody knows behind the scenes in Vic, Vic's real basement. He has so many Batman figures, it's like, it's mesmerizing. Well, you don't even know how many I have. I, I, I've put like over away. 20. Oh, I'm about to score on myself again. Good. I just did. You get, no. I don't know what no, I'm doing. I just did. I'm too busy talking. JM man. scored. Yay. I scored. I scored on you myself. You did all the work for me. I yeah, love it. Unbelievable. Maybe one of your Batman scored for, <laughs> for me or something like that. But I remember, like, I came to your basement and I'm like, why does he have so many goddamn Batman <laughs> figures? What's happening here? You have you have a plethora of Star Wars action. Figures. I may have a few in the closet. And, and you've kept going on the uh, the three inch three and three quarter. Yeah, yeah. I I had to give up that line after after uh, I, you know, many, I, many 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 years. I, of I've also them. gone back into Transformers lately. Oh my Yay! God! You, whoa, yeah. Both I, of I your points were from me. I didn't do anything I won. Isn't okay. that so amazing? All right, all right. <laughs> uh, let's let's try that again. Uh, Oh, did we unlock something? What did we do? Oh, yeah, we, un we unlocked stuff. Cool. It's okay. I haven't really played it on this machine. It isn't oh, as... Oh, it's okay. It, it isn't it's all right. I've got some excuses. It isn't as pretty <laughs> as it is on the other platforms, but it's still it's pretty cool. It's fine for the type of game Do, it does is. Does Vic though? have any Batman dolls that are wearing cargo shorts? I'm asking for a friend. Sean! Sean L! They're called action figures, not dolls. <laughs> action dolls. I love it. Where Barrel was asking about the I have the Batmobile. Oh, is that what you play? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Of course he I, is. I, I, of course I, he I, is. I bought it twice. <laughs> I bought it on the. Uh, I might have it Come on, on Steam on, too. Play. I, I might have it on Steam, so I might have it three times. But yeah, if you could buy a Batmobile in a game, I'm buying a Batmobile. So I'm not like totally anti DLC. It just has to be Batman related. This is ridiculous. All right. Whoa. So this is uh, this is cool. I've got the red piping. I'm in a, like a Batman Beyond um, Batmobile, but it's from the uh, the Justice League and, and Batman versus Superman movies, which I'm not crazy about. They don't they they don't have the Nolan. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Brian Tumblr. in Game Traders, and he was very upset how much you hated those movies. Oh, uh, which one? <laughs> the Batman. <laughs> the Batman versus, versus uh, Superman. Really? Yeah. No way. He loved in, it. He's in like Toy Traders. Really? Yeah. He was like, I can't believe Vic hurt. You know, he hurt my feelings. Said he hates it so much. Oh, it's that's what he said. Awful. I know. Well, uh, <laughs> just not not necessarily awful. Just super mediocre and awfully disappointing. Justice League's a little bit more interesting. Um, still, should have been way better. I actually have the 4K Blu-ray of Justice League coming next week. And I'm, Why? I, I, bought, I know. I look. Blake's even looking at it. I, I like, bought it because doing? I want to review it. But you know uh, what? Though there's a lot of people who did like the movie. I, it wasn't for me per se. Yes. But. Well, I I want to see it again. I want to watch it again. The other movie I want to watch again on home video is uh, uh, Last Jedi. That's coming out pretty soon, isn't it? Yeah, I need to see that a few more times. Yeah. But you know why I'm upset about the Last Jedi? People like I like the movie, yeah. which is like not what a lot of people think. I'm upset how much it's split the fan base now. And there's yeah. so many. And you know what? I understand why a lot of people dislike the movie. I'm scoring on you know? myself again. I'm letting you do it. No. Just, 
I, I, I keep scoring on my own net. <laughs> what is the third my time? Net, my nephew's over here, and even he's laughing at This is so good. Uh, at least I'm getting it in a net. Yeah. It's <laughs> the wrong one. Uh, ga- gamer uh, or Garnet B? or Yeah, Garnet B. Uh, what bands do you guys like? That's a good question. My old school band. Did you? What, what did you listen to when you were growing up? Were you a punk guy? Um, no, I was kind of an alternative guy. One of my favorite bands is The Cure. Oh, I like The Cure, yeah. And I love... Um, uh, oh God, I, I I like Daft Punk and Depeche I, Mode. You like? I I you know what? I saw the Depeche Mode concert recently and I loved it. I didn't really collect their stuff. What I was were you in, doing as a kid. I just I, don't understand what he was doing. And I I was I was I, I, a- acting and seeing movies. And you always his acting thing is always taking up so much time. You're an actor. Yeah, and like, collecting toys and and reading comic books. I used to get a lot of movie soundtracks when I was a kid. Surprise, Me too. Surprise. I did that too. I used to love movie soundtracks. Um, I liked uh, Chris Isaac way before Chris Isaac was popular, and uh, uh, Husker Du. I remember digging. Uh, I was a big, I was a big punk rock fan. I I loved the Dead Kennedys, the Sex Pistols. That's I, cool. Oh my DOA. Yeah. No means no. Some of my favorites. Um, recently, I'm a huge Block Party fan. I like uh, Jake Bug. Uh, I thought the Arctic Monkeys were pretty cool. The Arctic Monkeys is a band called yeah, the Arctic Monkeys. I I love Elvis Costello. I think he's yeah. a genius, and I'm a fan of Ray Lamontagne. So my my tastes are are pretty eclectic. I, yeah, and I love um, Dead Mouse and and, uh, and you like you like Tragically Hip as well. I'm a big fan I, of those guys. I like them. I'm not crazy you, about it. Me and you are like in different generations. I swear to God, yeah. we're not that far apart. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. No, you're not scoring on me, pal. Uh, I, I'm Almost. still getting used to this game. It's fun, uh, though. This is really cool. Yeah, it's super cool. It's just, it's I very also, bouncy. I also love jazz. I'm a yeah, big, are you? I'm, I'm a big fan of jazz. I'm going to score my own net now, yes. Vic. I'm yes! Gonna do, I'm going to help you out. Yeah, we're so good at scoring on our own net. <laughs> <laughs> we are masters of that. This game almost <laughs> makes it easier to score in your own net. Uh, question, have you seen the movie Wonder and did you cry? I did not see the movie Wonder specifically because I did not want to cry. Did you see Lady Bird yet? I did see Lady Bird. That was good, wasn't it? That was a good I movie. I really liked that. I watched... Yeah. Uh, so you went and watched all of the Oscar movies then? I'd watched it. Yeah, do you know yeah. what? On a night, yeah. yeah sometimes some of the things I do. I love watching We should have got together and, and reviewed all of those for Film Fury. It's oh, kind of oh, too late right it's now. It's too late. Yeah. But, and just, uh, all the editing Well, I mean, we can, I can ask you. Do, do you think... The, well, yeah, Shape of Water should have won. That was the I, best To movie. be honest, absolutely honest, Yeah. it's a great movie, but it's about a man dating a fish. <laughs> No, no. Uh, sorry, a woman. woman. Sorry, yeah. woman. I'm sorry. I'm too busy you got, concentrating you got on the this. Plot wrong. Yeah, no, no. I saw the movie. I saw the movie. We saw it two, three weeks early. No, it, sorry. I'm stopping playing the game. It's about a woman dating a fish. Yes. It's good. Cinematography is great. Magical. Fish. Is it? But is it worth? It's not movie of the year. Breath of the Wild was the best game of the year. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but it's not the whole concept. No, you know? it, it's it's a parable, man. It's a it's, it's about fine. It's, it's, a, it's, it's good. about universal acceptance and and there's so many I, I, fantastic what, about having side sex plots. With the fish? Yeah, it's about not not uh, demonizing and terrorizing things that we don't know and don't understand. It's a beautifully well. We don't know if he was film. even a healthy fish. He was he was a god, is what he was. He was much more. Well, than just I, a I don't fish. think that. I think and, he was and, just a crazy. And fish. so was she. Well, we're spoiling everything here. Yeah, okay. it doesn't matter. Yeah. You got to see this movie because it's definitely one it's you'll really never forget. It's really good, but I don't know if it's movie of the year. It was for me, for it sure. It should have been Blade Runner. It should have been Blade Runner. Should have yes. been Blade. That was out of, so out of, amazing. Out of those nominated, though, it was the movie of the year. But what would you say was your second favorite? Would it be Dunkirk or Darkest Hour or? You know what I'm going to say is the most. Nobody would agree with me, and I don't care. Valerian. No, no, no. Out of the nominated ones. And, the, and, what was the other one? Oh, was, was it Get Out? Get, Get Out. Was that one yeah, of them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Get Out was a pretty good film, but definitely not movie of the year. I know. Um, so Lady Bird, Darkest Hour. You know what? Lady Bird was really up there. Yeah? And there's, what was it? You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, Good Times was really good. Good Times. Good Times. Time. Also not um, nominated. And though. you know, to be honest with you, Ghost Story. Oh, that was cool. Uh, that yeah. was really different. I like those kind of weird indie movies yeah. that are really strange. Yeah. We got to see a lot of them last year. We should yeah. get to see uh, more the, of them. The Oscars should have called us. Yeah, oh, we right. probably saw more movies than the people that are actually yeah. in the Academy. And there was a lot of interesting movies they, last they were, they were Dunkirk ins- was good, but it wasn't definitely no. not movie of the year. I like Darkest Hour better than Dunkirk. I mean, absolutely, me too. Yeah. I was so much more drawn into the story. And it's about the Battle of Dunkirk. Yeah. From, uh, he, from Winston Churchill's perspective. point of view, how he had to set that in motion. And he, it was a tough decision, yeah. A tough decision for him, but also he did some heinous things as well. Like he, Oh, yeah. Like yeah, he, yeah. He sent people to die, you know? Yeah. And so, but there, we do see the frailty of the man and, and the... Uh, 
the insecurities and and Gary. That's Oldman's what it's all about. Gary Oldman's amazing. I love Gary Oldman. Yeah. Yeah, all the way back from Zorg days on Fifth Elements. Oh, he was great. You guys have is there the camera angle where you can always look at the ball? Uh, camera option. Is there? Uh, it's always centered on the ball. Is mm. that the better way to play Center it? Well, ball. I, I find it easier, but I'm just curious if they have it on Twitch. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. But uh, I'm just still rocking again. How would you so it's, camera? I Hold. Okay. 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 So we're always facing the. Is that it? We're always facing the ball, kind of thing. It didn't stick. No. That's fine. This isn't rocket science. Uh, it's rocket league. <laughs> you know. Nope, didn't stick. Maybe it doesn't do it in Twitch things. Probably not. Ah. Uh, I'm su- I, I'm pretty impressed that it's running this well. I didn't know if it was going to put in uh, any AI people or not. Any questions or comments? Oh, the Shenmue remasters are still rumored, but not official. If the games do release, how Nothing do you yet. think uh, modern audiences will receive it? I think I think um, if they give it a bit of time. Put it this way: back in the Dreamcast day, people didn't accept it fully, yeah. like I did. But some of my friends said, "Oh, it's boring." Yeah. Oh, you don't do anything Ta- for days. It takes a long time, and and you know what? I'm playing uh, Yakuza. Yeah. Uh, I played a little Kiwami before I got y- Yakuza Six, and there there is a lot of similarities oh absolutely and uh it does take a while to get going and there's tons of cutscenes, and there's tons of like plot development but then there's something that happens and i've really amazing i've really kind of clued into this with sega games like they make games differently there and there's a uh, there's a moment in a lot of sega games where it's just like ah i'm in i'm locked i can't i can't believe how fun this is it was amazing being in Shenmue, being a part of that revenge story, yeah. and I felt it. I, I, you know, you you wake up and your father's died, yeah. and then you know he's been killed, and then you are on your own living with your grandmother. It's a really sad story. Well, it's human. And it's eerie. It's very, yeah, it's human. It's very eerie, and you're trying to find your place in the world and who you are. And there's a lot of that yeah. in, in uh, Yakuza Six yeah. as well, and actually all the Yakuza games. I'm, I. I didn't really understand those Yakuza games when Tommy and I reviewed them 10 years ago. Did you? I mean, I did, but I, I was like, well, it's not Grand Theft Auto. And I think everybody's uh, always wanted Grand Theft Auto as, as Yakuza. Yeah. And maybe one day we'll actually get something like that. Um, th- I'd, I think 6 it, it comes probably closest because the fidelity is so great. But it, it is about I remember, Do you remember when I was watching you uh, stream... You, you accuse of zero? Yeah. And you're in that S&M scene? And yes. I was just like, Vic, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> that was so funny. And it, you're like, I don't know what's happening. I mean, within, you can control what was going I, on. I don't it's even amazing. know how much I'm allowed to talk about six, I but but I, I, within a few minutes of playing the game, I was in a club picking a girl to I know. be my... Be and my, that, uh, that is so not Vic. <laughs> it was, you know? it was, like, that's so anti-Vic. It made me very uncomfortable. And it was like, wonderful okay. to watch. And then I'm, like, I'm watching little hearts sort of float around the woman as I'm... Yeah. Am, am I charming her or not? It was just bizarre. Yeah, that yeah. That, yeah, that was a very, very funny moment. Yes. And then, wasn't it some of the uh, Yakuza guys were in like uh, baby outfits? And yes. things got started to get to a whole new level. We might see a real score here. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your hats. Whoa! I'm I so, think we I, broke the internet. I'm so impressed. Uh, let's see what I'm we so got impressed. here. Any other questions here? Uh, Sega, sold it, uh, Sega sold it like Grand Theft Auto the first time. You're absolutely right. Uh, question, do you feel a lot of films are overrated by critics as a result of political message or agenda being driven? That's from uh, Sufami Dan. Uh, I don't know. Like, It's hard to loop in all critics into one pot. I know that we have a tendency to do that in this sort of um, Metacritic kind of era. But I think every critic, and I can only speak for myself, kind of comes at these movies from their own set of biases. Oh, yeah, for and sure. And their own personal thing. Yeah. And, like, like yeah. when I watch um, The Shape of Water, I didn't see it having a message in that regard. Right. And nor did I want it to have a message. Yeah. I don't want my movies to have a message in that regard. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to watch a movie and enjoy it. I don't yeah. want this big, huge political... Because we're in such a political time. Yeah. I kind of watch movies to escape yes. all of that stuff. So. Yeah, but politics infect every thing though you know yeah even, and even, I, even I try to stay the, away from it myself i'm not really a big fan of it all even within the context of their uh their own world that they're crafting yeah a political thing inside of their fictional reality yeah i play video games to escape reality yeah am i where Let's we're actually see. playing here yep uh oh you go down to join or no i'm join blue and are you still playing yes you i'm already pressed the uh plus button oh there you go uh, resume game. 
Okay, let's go. I press resume game. Do I have to press this? We broke the game, everybody! No, what happened? I don't know. Join blue. Oh, you're or I see. You're blue. Okay, here so we go. So it was you. It was me, yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, want, I wanted I'd to be blue. I've done everything correct. Uh, this is a uh, pressure from the award show side, I think, as I believe the winners are chosen behind the scenes. Ooh, I don't I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of uh, infrastructure in place right now to make sure that everything is authentic in there. Um, certainly, there's pressure uh, behind the scenes on... Uh, on uh, advertising and getting the Academy voters to kind of pay attention to things. Um, and there's probably, uh, am I scoring on myself? I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm you're welcome. It. You're I, welcome. I, I brought it in there yeah, you're welcome. Back. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the end. That's, a, that's our timer on the clock there. That but it, it was the low scored, um, Oscars in the last 44 years, wasn't it? Lowest like, rated. Rated. Yeah. Yes. Oh, nobody's watching this stuff anymore. They should put it on YouTube to stream. I think it's the television, you know? Yeah, like just yeah. as people are moving away from TV in general. Put uh, it on YouTube. This was so much fun. And, yeah. uh, you know, apologies to anybody out there that is so anti-Nintendo. They just had their ears bleeding <laughs> well, for our episode today. But We uh, do that about PlayStation and Xbox as well. Yeah, you know what? Have those moments. It would be good to actually get together and talk about uh, the success of the PlayStation 4 and also all of Which these different... Which is a mega success. Totally. And all the permutations of Xbox and all of the lessons that they have learned as a company and... Uh, I still don't think they've created enough controllers for the Xbox One. <laughs> I think they need to create at least 45 more. <laughs> My God. That would be amazing. I go in the store and it's just like two games and it's just controllers. <laughs> it's insanity. I, I wonder if there's something there, right? They need to make more games over there, right? Maybe yes. a few more. A few uh, more would be nice. Yeah, they make the hardware. In all yeah. senses of the word, yes. But you can also make your own. Have you, have you ever uh, made your own controller? No. I want to play that games. Awesome. I don't want to make controllers all day. True that. Okay. You know? uh, For sure. uh, sometimes I feel like I was taking, talking down to people. It seems to be creeping into games too, sadly. Great show anyway, guys. I uh, got you, Sufami Don. Uh, very much enjoyed it. Hey, we, we had a blast doing this. John, it's always a real treat. Thank to you for here, having right? me on. Absolutely. You are the best. You are Thank the you best. for having me on. Always fun to be here. We're back again tomorrow. We've got a great guest uh, joining me in studio, Ian Boothby, who is a comic writer and a comedian, has worked on lots of comics over the years. Uh, and he's got an interesting story to tell. He just launched a new comic called Sparks. He's going to be joining me. Uh, so please come back for that, and also check out all the other content we've been making. If you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell, and if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.